wants kettle corn at eight o'clock in the morning? <laughs> like, who wants just some sugar on some freaking corn? So I thought I would finally film a video I've been meaning to get to for a while. I think I've even talked about making this video in a couple of my other posts. So if you follow me on Instagram, if you've been following my health journey, um, you know that I have a corn allergy. And I talk about it all the time because it is such a hard allergy to have. So I thought I wanted to sit down with you guys and talk a little bit more about it. When I first got diagnosed with my corn allergy, I looked for every resource out there, but I didn't just want the information. I wanted to hear things from people who've lived it and experienced it themselves because it's very, very difficult to live with. So um, there are a few videos out there. I'm sure that they'll show up in the recommended with this one. They'll prob I could probably even link a couple below that I've watched and have commented on or follow the people that have them. So, um, yeah, uh, let's, let's get into it. I found out that I have a corn allergy via IgE blood test. Um, I was already sick for some time. You can watch the video on the actual progression of my illness. Um, I'll link it here. Um, but you can also, um, you can also just read my blog and stuff. I had been sick from January to basically they didn't find the answer until December of last year. So January, like the whole year I had been sick. Um, they couldn't figure out what it was for the very long time, for the longest time. But one of the things that I requested super early on was a food panel. And so the doctor didn't do a very comprehensive one. She just ordered a basic food panel, which for that company that does the test, I think it was the top 12. Um, it may have been the top 10, but corn was included in there. Um, it came back that I had allergens to wheat, peanuts, soy, and corn. Now, soy is also a very difficult allergy, but to be honest, oh, that is awful sounding. I really hope they get their car jacked. <laughs> To be honest, soy is also very difficult, but it is not the biggest hurdle for me. So that's why I don't talk about it as often. It's not at the forefront of my mind because most of the stuff that I've had to cut out for corn, I've like, they are also heavily made by soy too. So um, yeah, um, if you want the very, very quick and dirty version of what you have to do to cut corn out of your diet is basically if you look at the ingredients on a food and there's anything listed on there that isn't real food that's like a chemical name or a preservative or an additive or food coloring is probably corn. <laughs> that's the, the short and dirty part. Um, I am very fortunate to where I am only sensitive to ingestion of corn and popcorn fumes, which sucks if you go to the farmer's market because they always have somebody making kettle corn, which who wants kettle corn at eight o'clock in the morning? <laughs> like, Who wants just some sugar on some freaking corn? I mean, even when I liked popcorn, Kettle corn in the morning does not sound appetizing. <laughs> so, um, anyways, I found out through the blood test, and since I was really sick and I wasn't getting any better, um, the doctor originally told me that because I only had a moderate response to wheat and everything else was a low response, that I would only have to cut wheat from my diet. Being gluten-free is obviously super easy these days. A lot of people are gluten-free. Some people are gluten-free by choice and live perfectly happy, healthy lives. Um, but the other things are a little bit more difficult. Luckily, peanuts and soy are top eight allergens. So if they're contained in any food, you have that on the label. You also have some manufacturers that give you the courtesy of putting um, like, um, processed in the same facility as blah <laughs> and that is actually just a courtesy from the manufacturer it is not a requirement by law that uh, manufacturers report 
cross contamination in the facility or like you know ingredients specific ingredients if they get cross contaminated um, now I kind of just cut everything out that was prepackaged that had a um, anything on the label besides food items and that worked for me for a very very long time um, the reactions that I would have specifically to corn and corn derivatives were I would have mental reactions which it's really crazy like if anybody besides me and Jake had talked about it they probably would have thought like or like you know if I had to talk to anybody besides my husband about it they would have thought I was crazy but I could eat something that was contaminated with corn or a corn derivative and the first symptom I would get would be I would get extremely anxious and I'd get angry and like one of the times that sticks out in my mind with how I realized I was corned one time is um, Jake and I for our honeymoon because we were so worried about finding food sources traveling we did our honeymoon camping in Tahoe and we just bought a setup so we bought a brand new tent we bought a air mattress we bought like everything that we could possibly need to go camping and then we bought a tiny little Weber and a um, chimney starter and um, you can only use um, what is it like the cowboy charcoal I can't remember off the top of my head but like a certain type of charcoal you can't even use like the regular charcoal if you're corn allergic so during that whole time on my honeymoon I was only eating stuff off the grill so we do like grilled veggies and a grilled meat for every single meal and um, that was for three days and then on the fourth day we went to Jake's family's cabin in Truckee and on the way there we picked up some stuff so what had been working for me all right for a while was epic beef jerky and Lara bars I we go to the store and I pick those things up because I had only been eating stuff off the grill for a while and I wanted something a little bit more flavorful and like even though I had been perfectly calm and content for days when we got to Truckee after I had eaten those in the car I got in a fight with Jake and he was like what happened to you like and it was a stupid fight I don't even remember what it was about that's how stupid it was he was like what happened to you you were so happy and so calm and it took me a second and I was like I ate something out of a package for the first time in three days and from that time on, I had to really, really, really limit what I ate out of packages. Um, so my diet right now is I am very fortunate as a corn allergic person to be able to still handle store-bought produce. I do most of my shopping at Whole Foods. I get, um, I get organic broccoli, cauliflower, sweet potatoes. Um, if they have Brussels sprouts, I can do those too. Um, but those aren't always in season. I could do bananas, mangoes. Um, the seasonings I'm still okay with are the organic Whole Foods like brand um, onion powder, garlic powder. I have to do only Himalayan salt. I haven't had good luck with any other type of salt. Um, Celtic sea salt is apparently okay, but um, I haven't, like I said, I've had it on products and not done okay with them. So um, I, I tend to stick to Himalayan salt because I know it'll work. I can only have one type of olive oil, literally the only type of olive oil that I can have or else I have a reaction. And then these are the only products that, like the only thing that comes out of a package right now that I do okay with. Um, everything else, like if I want something, I have to make it myself. I can do grass-fed meat if it comes from the meat counter, but I can't do it if it comes pre-packaged. Now, like with some corn allergic people, they can do it in, you know, like sometimes you'll feed, see grass-fed beef in like the freezer section, it's just wrapped in plastic. Um, but a lot of us can't do stuff on the styrofoam with the soaker pads um, and, that is because those 
are usually very corny. And I know I use the word corny as in like contains corn. You're gonna have to get used to that. Um, I also really like that corn allergy gives you these fun words like corn-taminated. <laughs> um, palindromes are fun. <laughs> Anyways, so I also do grass-fed beef from the farmer's market. I can do the the farm that like comes to my farmer's market. I'll link them down below. I don't know if they ship, so I'm really sorry if they don't. But if you're in Northern California or in the Bay Area, it might be an option for you. Um, but they also have pork products that I seem to do okay with. And um, I've done okay with some chicken, but I haven't had it in a very long time, so I can't tell you. Um, and also, I can do wild salmon, but it has to be wild salmon from the butcher canner. It can't be wild salmon from a frozen package. Um, so I had to give up basically all grains, all beans, like everything except for those things that I've mentioned. That's my whole diet right there. Like those, I don't, I didn't count, but like 10 things. And, um, that's why this allergy is really hard. Part of the reason that I am so limited though, and this is just my speculation, there's no way to ever know for sure, is because of all the stuff going on in my gut. Because I would cut and cut and cut things from my diet, hoping it would help with the symptoms, and then I would just lose my tolerance to them. I think I talked about oral tolerance in another video, but basically if you have underlying gut issues and you get rid of foods that you think are a problem, you you get more sensitive to them when you bring them back in. Um, now, um, so with corn allergy, I mentioned the mental symptoms. I also have some gastro gastrointestinal symptoms. I get bloating, I get um, pain, I get um, bathroom problems. I mean, I've mentioned that that is a issue with my health. In previous videos, luckily it's been taken care of between probiotics and digestive enzymes. Um, but luckily I've been able to do supplements because some people can't find supplements that work for them because either the capsule itself, what they fill it with, or even probiotics, they have to be grown on something. It's usually corn because corn sugar is cheap. Um, so I've just been really lucky in my journey that I am not super, 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 super sensitive. I'm just really sensitive and it's debilitating to my life, but it doesn't prevent me from living. I mean, there's people that have to do only certain brands of water. There's people that have to have every single water source in their house like filtered or else they get sick. They, there's people that can't have natural gas in their house because they get sick from that. This allergy gets really, really crazy. And even though I am not one of those people that's super sensitive, I wanted to put my voice out there because there's just not enough people with corn allergy making an online presence for themselves. And I want to show you that it's okay and that you can still be happy and have good food with a corn allergy. I think one of the things I didn't mention that I could have is coconut aminos. By the way, lifesaver with meat because if you want meat that tastes good, coconut aminos, you have to buy them. And hopefully you're not sensitive to coconut too because there are some people with corn allergies that are coconut allergic, of course. A lot of us have multiple allergies. Um, yeah, so I mean, if you've ever seen The Office, you've seen the episode where Daryl randomly says something about having a soy allergy at 35 and why is soy got to be in everything? Well, corn is in everything. You've seen me use that hashtag a lot if you are on my Instagram. Corn is in everything. So um, I'm hoping if you watch this whole thing and you're not corn allergic, maybe you'll appreciate not being allergic to corn because you can have more than 10 foods. If you're corn allergic and you're watching this and you need help with resources, I'm going to link the corn allergy Facebook group that I talk about all the time in the comments below or in the description below and um, corn allergy girls great blog it hasn't been updated a lot recently um, 
The maker of the blog though is in that corn allergy group and answers a lot of people's tougher questions. So at least she's a resource still. Um, there are, um, I'll link a corn derivatives list just so you can see how crazy long it is, even if you're not corn allergic. And um, you know, the one thing that I do have to caution you if you are corn allergic is never take the, um, the label corn free for grit or like at face value. Nothing is corn free. Everything has some degree of corn in it. Now I, like I've said, been lucky with supplements, with medications even, that I don't have to worry about it. But those are problems that I, I don't know too much about because I don't have them. Like compounding your medications, which means getting it so that there's no filler or a different filler that isn't corny or you know things like that. I don't know a lot about those things because I don't have to deal with them, but I'm happy to help you look if you're suffering from this too. If you have any more questions about my corn allergy, please leave them in the comments below. If you just want to commiserate with me, follow my Instagram, MWJHeart. I post about food allergies. I make food allergy memes. I post about astrology a lot too though, so you might find that annoying. Um, MWJHeart.com is my blog. I post a lot about my health issues, which happens to encompass the corn allergy. Or you can follow my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash MWJHeart or search Mandy Hart. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.